yeah the biological hazards so biological hazards or the potential hazards or the microbiological hazards the microbes like bacteria fungi protozoans and some worms virus so now we will discuss about the bacteria so bacterial hazards so bacterial hazards in the food are food industries so first we will discuss about the bacteria which are pathogenic the pathogenic bacteria are disease causing organisms like salmonella or vibrio cholerae listeria etc and food spoilage organisms also there eremonas or spidomonas bacillus etc these are all there so the bacterial bacterial hazards microbiological hazards again divide into two types one is food infection and one, another one is food intoxication the food infection whenever we ingest the food which is contaminated by the microorganisms that is called food infection then food intoxication whenever we ingest the food whenever we eat the food which is grown by the microorganisms produced toxins by the growth of the microorganisms in the food before we eat it produces some toxins so that is called food intoxication so these are the two things and another one is the bacteria the food intoxication again divide into two types the one is exotoxin the second one is endotoxin exotoxins the bacteria will release the toxins outside of the cell is called exotoxins endotoxins the bacteria will produce the toxins when the immune system of the host will kill the cell will oxidate the cell the toxins release into the body that is called endotoxins when we talking about the bacterial outbreaks most of the bacterial outbreaks pathogenic outbreaks comprising of 85% of food outbreaks occurs by the salmonella species in that 85% food outbreaks 50% food outbreaks caused by salmonella entities these outbreaks the cdc center for disease control and prevention of the usa has conducted research on this these food outbreaks occurs 80% of the outbreaks occurs in the cafeterias in restaurants the food which is serving in the outside only these kind of outbreaks are occurring now we will discuss about the source of the contamination of the hazards biological hazards the, how the biological hazards how the microbes are contaminating the food or food products here i will use one mnemonic device to memorize the uh, things h e r e here here is the source of the microbiological contamination of the food h stands for humans h stands for humans e e stands for environment r r r stands for raw food raw material raw ingredients again e stands for equipments sources of contamination of microbes there are to recognize to memorize this thing i will use a mnemonic device it's an acronym here the sources of contamination of microbes is is here is an acronym h stands for humans e stands for environment r stands for raw food raw ingredients or raw material again e stands for equipment and machinery which are using in the food industry explain in details 
humans h stands for humans here humans by improper personalizing practices by improper sanitary practice or some of the humans some of the people who are reservoirs of the pathogenic bacteria or some of the people who are following poor sanitary practices poor personalizing practices we can when they will touch the food the food will contaminate that is the one source the second one is environment environment means by the droplets or by the air atmosphere air and by the sediments sediments also harbors many kinds of bacteria and by sea ways the water and some by the environment means by the rodents also can transmit the bacteria pathogenic bacteria then can contaminate the pathogen to the food next one is raw material or raw ingredients so raw ingredients may be the chances of harmful bacteria or the contagious bacteria or raw material through the raw material we are contaminating the food so we must be very cautious about the raw ingredients or raw materials also that is the one source and the last one is equipments and utensils the equipments and utensils which we are using for the food contact surfaces or which we are using to process the food should be cleaned and sanitized otherwise that also may lead to the sources of contamination especially in the food industries equipments and utensils plays the vital role for the contamination especially in the food industries human activity improper personalization and improper sanitary practices that also leads to the contamination of pathogen bacteria so the bacteria is by the divisible it's a divisible by the binary fission so bacteria can spread the pathogen bacteria can spread by 20 minutes or 18 minutes 25 minutes like that in one day or 18 hours 18 hours to 24 hours some bacteria up to 7 to 2 hours it will become potent once you once we take the infected food infected food by the pathogenic bacteria once we take the once we ingest the food which contains the pathogenic bacteria which once it will reaches to the our intestine which will double 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 and multiply 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 1 2 4 like that it will multiply then in 24 hours it will become lakhs millions and then billions become potent it will dominate our immune system then we will become sick the symptoms like diarrhea typhoid abdominal cramping like if the salmonella uh, staphylococcus different different kinds of bacteria are there so these are the problems we face types of foods two types of foods high risk food and low risk food so high risk foods are more susceptible to be attacked by the microbes compared with low risk foods how to distinguish how to identify the high risk food and low risk food so how to differentiate i will give you the ex examples the high risk food means the food which contains the proteins nutritive value of the food which contains proteins and carbohydrates and food which contains the ph neutral to slightly acidic and the food which contains water activity above 0.85% these are all comes under high risk foods for example chicken mutton fish and cooked rice etc these are all comes under high risk foods the low risk foods dried food stuffs pickles etc these these will comes under low risk foods so i i will explain you one uh, one mnemonic to memorize you f a t t o m fatum so this is a mnemonic device to memorize the food technologists or food professionals who opted this food science as a career f a t t o m is the tool to identify the food comes under high risk or low risk it's an acronym f stands for food which contains proteins carbohydrates food food which contains proteins and carbohydrates means highly nutritive food a means acidic <coughs> acidity 
so acidic means food which contains from 4.6 ph to 8 or something food which food food the ph ph of the food must be neutral to slightly acidic which favors the growth of the microorganisms t t is the <coughs> t t is the temperature so temperature for the favorable growth of the microorganisms temperature from 5 degree centigrade to about 45 50 degree centigrade are the dangerous zone so that affects the favorable growth f a t then again t is a time if the product exposed to the dangerous zone for more than 4 hours which may prone to potential that's a time more than 4 hours f a t t then next one is o oxygen if the availability of oxygen which may leads to the spoilage organisms proliferation of spoilage organisms proliferation of many kinds of bacteria and microorganisms so oxygen is also plays the vital role to spoil the food and f a t t o and then last one is m m means moisture if the food contains 0.85 water activity most of the bacteria will grow the bacteria the one and only bacteria which can grow below the 0.85% below the 0.85 water activity is called staphylococcus and all the bacteria need above 0.85 water activity if the food is more moisture then there may be the chances of growth of microbial organisms based on this we can categorize into the food whether which comes under high risk food or low risk food i will just brief you about the bacteria bacteria are depends upon the temperature divided into three types one is psychrophiles the second one is mesophiles and third one is thermophiles psychrophiles means cold loving bacteria which can grow in a refrigerated temperature the optimum temperature of psychrophiles is plus 15 degree centigrade 12 to 15 degree centigrade then mesophiles psychrophiles example pseudomonas aeromonas lactobacillus and bacillus acidus etc cold loving bacteria then mesophiles mesophiles are the most of the mesophiles most of the bacteria most of the pathogen bacteria comes under the mesophiles the temperature ranges from 20 degree centigrade to 40 degree centigrade are called mesophiles the bacteria which can grow the temperature the optimum temperature for the growth of mesophiles are 35 degree centigrade plus or minus 1 degree centigrade salmonella vibrio cholerae listeria etc equally aerobic mesophiles all comes under mesophiles the last one is thermophiles thermophiles means the bacteria which can grow above 40 degree centigrade to 60 degree centigrade the optimum temperature for the growth of the bacteria is 40 degree centigrade example clostridium and some bacteria spore forming bacteria also comes under thermophiles so the bacteria can survive the bacteria are heat resistant these are the three categories depends on the temperature and the national advisory committee on microbial criteria added two more into these three categories that one is extreme psychrophiles the bacteria which can grow zero sub zero and minus temperatures also the growth will occur and even proliferation is also occur at rare cases extreme thermophiles the bacteria which can grow above autoclaving temperature is called extreme thermophiles at the area of yellow zone scientists have discovered that extreme thermophilic thermophilic bacteria